John, we're EMO 2017. Tornos are always leading the charge with new innovations. What is new on this stand this year? Hello, Paul. Okay, so what we uh, what we have new this this year for for Tornos for EMO is the um, Swiss Deco uh, 36. Uh, 36T. And what is new about that machine? Let's start with that one. What's different? Okay, this this machine gives us both a turret and slide capability on the on the main spindle. I, I saw that. Can that turret work on both spindles? It can work. Yes, both on the main and counter spindle. It gives us a very large tool capability, up to 49 tools. So it's aiming for complex complex parts where we can have also on the counter spindle uh, a large number of uh, tooling positions. Is that 49 tools including the tools on the turret as well then? Yes, that's right, yes. yes. And this is a sliding head machine? It, it's a sliding head stock, but like most of our machines now, it has the ability to run either with or without a guide bush that we can switch over during the, uh, the setup of the part. And if it's a sliding, uh, sliding head machine, and, and can the turret move in the Z-axis as well as the sliding head, sliding two, so you're kind of going against each other, if that makes sense. Yes, that's what's uh, good with this machine. On the main headstock, you have two Z axes, so it <clears throat> gives us the ability to do two separate operations on the bar in the main spindle at once, but to also balance turn or balance mill, but, but not be governed by where just the one Z axis is, so we can get, obviously, more productivity but flexibility with the tooling. You also mentioned to me earlier as well about the fact that the swarf and the coolant is kept outside of the machine which is quite novel. Yes, um, what we are finding is, as time's going on more people are trying to run extended hours and that, that's putting pressure on the conventional coolant system, coolant tank type of setups. People running difficult materials, they don't want to touch the tank and clean it out every now and again. We want sort of fit and forget type solutions within reason. So the idea of moving the swarf and the coolant outside of the, outside of the machine into one container is that we can build in things like paper band filtration systems for getting um, clean oil back into the tank. Uh, we're not putting the dirty oil through the pumps and through your coolant through tools. Um, so and the machines and the tooling are going to last longer too? We get the, the, the longer life with the tooling, we also get the less maintenance intervals where people are having to go in and pull out the machine to keep all of the uh, conveyor and tank uh, clean as well. Okay, so this is one highlight, we'll talk about the other two in a minute, but that machine, the machine we're talking about, the Deco, isn't launched yet, is it? Or, or is this the launch pad? No, this is... This is pre-launch pad. This is the pre-launch pad. The machine technically goes on sale um, in January next year. Uh, EMO today is for us to show our, our customers and, and existing users you know, what's coming along with this machine um, and it's also to promote discussion with their thoughts on how this fits in with their, their production and costings. So when we launch in the first, uh, you, you know, the first of next year, we've got the right uh, commercial solution for them to, uh, to make the machine a, a success. So. Now, some machines that are already launched and you can buy today are the, uh, the Multi-Swiss, is that that's correct? Right. Yes, yes. So that's number two. Tell us about that, the highlights for, for people coming to see those this week. Okay, so the Multi-Swiss, this is the first show that I can remember where we have all three uh, models and sizes of Multi-Swiss together. So that's the 16 millimeter, um, 16, uh, six mil spindle. So that machine's been around a few years. We've had a very good... Um, so that's a six-spindle machine, yeah? Six-spindle machine. And we've had very good sort of sales uh, response for that machine. There's uh, over 250 or approaching 250 machines sold. And uh, 200... It's only launched a year ago. So, uh, no, this, this machine has been around uh, three or four years now, uh, the smaller machine. But the, the two bigger machines, uh, the six spindle 32 millimeter and eight spindle 26 millimeter they've been around uh, just over a year again very good success with those models um, for why are they having success what's good about them i mean we're talking multi-spindle we're talking high volume machining correct yes that's right it's 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 a volume machine but because of the the layout you can literally step into the machine to set it we're finding that the, the setup and changeover times are much faster than the uh, traditional multi-spindle machines. Um, we also have, with uh, the pricing of the machine, by the way we're building the, the, the modern construction of the machine, 
we're actually undercutting our traditional multi prices by you know a big percentage so it's making financially uh, good sense for customers that are maybe making lower cost parts um, to, to, to take this type of machine. And is that the case in the UK market as well then, John, at the moment? You, uh, you know, we talk about the success that Tornos are having, maybe on a global scale with the numbers you mentioned, but is that the same in the UK with a multi-spindor or is that, is that market dying for us? No, it's not. Um, we've, we've noticed in certainly the last three years the, the volumes increasing in, in the UK. And again, by having multi-spindles of a, of a high quality, high precision, but a lower price, we are catching some of the parts that would traditionally be made on lower cost machines that, that a CNC multi would, uh, would, would, would be too, you know, too expensive to complete. And that setup time is key, isn't it? Because that was always one of the drawbacks of the multi-spindle going from part to part, the amount of time it took to set. So if you've improved that sufficient or significantly, I can see the advantage there. Okay, so that's number two. Number three, the BA machine. Yes, the BA is uh, one of our Almac products, and the BA is a bar milling machine with a capacity of up to 16 millimeter uh, diameter bar and, and square or profile within that, within that diameter size. Uh, the, the, the BA is purely a milling machine. It can do limited turning by milling a, a diameter, but it is primarily a turning, uh, sorry, a, a milling machine. Now, what we've added to the, the, the BA uh, for Emo here is it's got a tool changer, and that's giving us the ability to, to manage 12 tools on the machine. How many did you have? We had uh, six to eight before, but, but now we also have the ability to, to tool change small tools into a high frequency spindle as well. So um, not, not only just uh, into mechanically driven live units, but into units that are doing 28,000 RPM. So where before you would have a live unit typically costing four or 5,000 pound a shot, we can now just have one live unit and change six different tools into it in, in the cycle. So you know, that way we can keep, uh, again, the cost uh, very, uh, very good. It's a pretty innovative machine, that, isn't it? There's not many like it, but we're talking about machining very small, uh, intricate parts on a milling, aren't we, with the uh, with that Almac? Yes, it's typically for, for micro-machined parts. So it was originally developed for the watch industry for doing parts that are, are, are very difficult to see with the naked eye. But it's finding its niche now in other markets where we have very small, intricate milled parts that the machine is quite unique. You, you won't find anything else like it in the marketplace. Um, but we have you know, the ability to, to machine from bar without having to pick up into a fixture or load into a fixture very small, complex parts. And this is where you, you know, it gets its savings. That and in-cycle uh, measurement as well, isn't that part of this, the, to, to maintain tolerances? Yeah, productivity is the key word when you're, you're trying to make a, you know, big batches of parts. So what we can do for unmanned running is the machine has a in-process probing system that measures parts, automatically updates tool, uh, tool wear offsets, and there's also a second probe on the machine, so when you want to make a quick changeover, we can readjust the tool, uh, the tool diameter length um, automatically on the probe. So we're talking three highlights there, so this has been a review of the Tornos stand here at EMO 2017. Thank you very much, John. Thank you very much, Paul. Thanks.